Getting good advice applies just as much to grain growers who've had to put up with the opposite extreme. 2010 was Southwest WA's driest year on record, according to the National Climate Centre, and while elsewhere in the West some were lucky enough to harvest a good crop, the majority didn't. And just as it is in the East, the need here is to plan well for the season ahead. The 2010 season was uh, diabolical for some people, brilliant for others, and uh, everything in between. But the majority of WA had a bad season, and most people are very happy to forget it. For grain growers like Neil Young and those he represents, it's now the challenges that lie ahead that matter most. The big issues coming up in 2011 are all for the majority of WA are going to revolve around cost and uh, minimising cost and trying to optimise profit without having too much risk. And a starting point for that process is to look at the dollars growers put into these dry soils in the form of fertiliser. What I'd like to see farmers do is be very, very tight on their phosphorus application, use soil tests to uh, define where they can cut and uh, reduce their costs on phosphorus to make sure they can allocate enough funds towards the nitrogen side of things and any other micronutrients that may be needed, but mainly nitrogen is the, is the kingpin. The other thing that people will be needing to think about is whether there's any residual chemicals that have carried over, particularly if there's late applied SUs and uh, if they're in an area which hasn't had rain, then they need to think about that in terms of their planting the winter crop, just because uh, it would be a great shame to go plant a crop and discover that you've got SU damage and it's too late by the time you discover it. What to plant will also need careful consideration. A lot of canola went in last year so it's likely cereals will be the choice of many growers in the West. That's a good decision in, in a one year plan but just think about what that will do for the following year, for 2012, if you make sure that you do have somewhere and some plan as to how you're going to manage your ongoing cereals because we know that cereal on cereal is marginally poor yielding. Uh, it has greater weed risks, it has greater disease risks. Doesn't mean it's, it's not a profitable thing to do, but it just is a higher risk. And so that's something that people need to think through. The advice is to also think clearly about noting on the crop rotation plans, deadlines for sowing and culling paddocks. Very often I've come across situations where farmers have gone in and they've got a let's say a canola paddock and they've gone oh, it only went 0.2 of a tonne last year and on the notes it says do not sow if it doesn't rain by May the 15th and uh, it didn't get sown until May the 25th they had a little bit of rain then it shouldn't have gone in. Weeds will also be a challenge this season and early control of summer weeds will eliminate competition for nutrients and moisture. Some welcome news is seed grain quality is good as a result of the big dry. However, it will mean careful seed selection. The best advice I can get is that uh, bigger seed is always a better seed for planting. So if at all possible, encourage farmers to grade their seed and pick the best, the very best of the best. Because it does matter, it does affect early seed growth, early seed germination counts, uh, it affects weed competition and so it will have an impact on next year's crop. If the lack of widespread rain in 2010 wasn't enough, cropping areas from Geraldton to WA's south coast were hit by a severe windstorm in January, stripping moisture-preserving stubble from paddocks. Well, the winds were so strong, over 100 kilometres an hour in, in a lot of places for a considerable period of time, that straw's blown up against the fence line, caught, formed a wall and then it's bent over star pickets and uh, there's a, a lot of damage around the place which is uh, not exactly what we wanted to start the 2011 season. What will help reduce risk and give growers their best chance to maximise potential profits this year will be to seek advice that's tailored to their situation. Farmers need to be focused on their own business and not listen too much to what's happening outside their business because everyone, everyone is in a different uh, uh, dollars and cents situation. I've seen clients who are still up around 95% equity and we've got clients down at 50% equity. So their, their risk profile is very, very different. The other thing that they're going to benefit from is 
making use of some of the GRDC information on precision agriculture, which has really highlighted the benefit of targeting paddocks, targeting areas and varying the inputs to suit. And the biggest hope for season 2011 will be to get some rain. Western Australia's Department of Agriculture and Food has recently released a drought recovery guide based on GRDC's low-risk farming guides and you'll find links on our information page at grdc.com.au forward slash groundcovertv along with links to Greenbridge Control, variety trial results and those fact sheets on seed testing.